Hi everyone, in this Wildlife Photography Lightroom tutorial, I'm going to show you the full edit on this cheetah image. This being the raw file and this being the final result. So to start, as usual, I'm going to choose Adobe Standard and I'm going to work on the initial contrast. Now my vision for this image is a bit of backlighting, so I want to emphasize that backlight and really emphasize the warm golden light, but I'll work on the global adjustments to start with. It's going to drop the exposure a bit, raise the blacks, Shooting into the sun, the contrast is a bit softer. I'm going to raise up the whites, making sure to hold down Alt to make sure I'm not blowing any detail out there. And it's looking pretty nice. I just want to fix this skew horizon here, although it's not the actual horizon, it's just a line in the image, but I want that to be straight, so I'm just going to rotate that a little bit. And then while I'm there, I might just crop the image. I'm going to keep the same aspect ratio, I think and move the animal more towards the bottom left because I want the light effect I'm going to emphasize to come in from the top right hand corner. And there's a nice big distraction right in front of the line here. So I want to get rid of that. I'm just going to go to content aware remove, click that there. That's looking much better. There's a spot on the bottom which I might remove as well. Find if you can just simplify the image with removing elements that are insignificant to the photograph, it's a good idea. So to start with, I'm going to just turn this detail off. I'm going to go to Lens Correction, click Remove Chromatic Aberration. And I think I'm going to run this through the AID noise. It's not very noisy, but I think it'll just clean it up just a little bit there. Probably with about 40%, maybe even 30% there. So I'm going to let that run and that will give us a nice clean DNG file to work with. Okay, so as to start, I want to just increase the contrast a bit. I'm going to drop these darks here. It's a nice idea to use the tone curve to darken parts of your image because it basically protects that black point and it won't darken that very bottom there. I might increase this up quite a bit here. Now I'm going to warm this up and then I want to add some blues into the shadows with color grading. So I normally just drop that slider all the way just to see what color I'm dealing with here. And then maybe just bring it back there and change the blending or the balance, I should say, just to apply that blue into the real dark parts of the image. Play around with this. Now the blue is interacting quite strangely with the white balance. It might need a bit more warmth. A bit more on this here. Maybe something like that. I think the green is throwing me off. So I'm going to adjust that green color to become more of a desaturated green. And I might shift the hue more towards the color of the light. So instead of being green, I'm going to make it a bit more sort of orange or yellow then. This is a real tricky image to edit. Getting the colors right is gonna be very tricky, but I think just desaturating those greens and now adding this warmth, it's definitely looking a bit better. Just tweaking the white balance a bit here. Going back to the color grading, see if I can throw that blue into more of the darker areas, just by adjusting that balance there. It's looking pretty good. I think I need to add some contrast and then maybe desaturate those greens a bit more. And then drop the yellow as well. I'll bring back the saturation on the cheetah now. So I think let's do that next. I'm going to create a select subject and it should do a pretty good job. It's got a few issues here. So I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to subtract a brush using the auto mask feature. And I'm just going to click and remove that area there. And also those bright parts of that spot there. I'm going to remove this. That's not part of the subject. Move that there. That's looking good. This area between the leg and the tail. That's why the auto mask for things like this is a good idea protects the subject from being deselected. So we've got a nice selection of the animal there. I'm going to just change this to be called subject. And let's see, we want to increase the saturation. And then I might increase the magenta on the animal. And definitely some clarity just to pop the animal a bit more there. A little bit of exposure. 
want it to be too orange. Maybe something like that. Let's increase the whites. Now that's really creating a nice effect. Okay, so I want to next just create a bit more mood, a bit of a vignette. So I'm going to darken the bottom just to almost create a bit of light fall off there. Not too much. Now, the fun part, let's create a bit of a light effect on the background. So I'm going to choose the subject mask here. I'm going to duplicate and invert it. So I want to emphasize that light. So I need to create an inverted selection here. And what I want to do is I want to just remove the foreground. So I'm going to click and subtract linear gradient like that. Maybe just make the feathering a bit less. Something like that. So you can see it's not going to affect the foreground. And then I'm going to intersect that with a radial gradient. Now to do that, I want to just zoom out to about 12% and I make a nice big radial gradient here. And that's going to create the selection for us that we want to create that light from the back. I don't want to blow out any details, but I want to make that light effect nice and soft. Might add some dehaze. It was a very hazy scene, so adding the dehaze will work nicely. A bit of saturation. And what's nice in the Lightroom masking panels, you can actually add a color to your selection. So in this color here, I'm going to click that. When it's got the little X across the box, that means no color is being added. And by just simply clicking inside this box, I'm going to add a color. So Let's just, but for demonstration, click this blue. You can see it's adding some blue there. We obviously don't want blue. We want to add some nice warm color. So nice golden light there. You can use a more desaturated color or a more saturated color like that. But I think something around about there. I don't want it to, to look too hyper-realistic. Something around about there looks pretty nice. And then... A characteristic of backlighting is low contrast. So I'm just going to up the blacks quite a bit here. Then maybe adjust the temperature like that. And then I might add one more very soft radial gradient again, just to this area, just to make that the brightest part of the sky. So it almost looks like the sun's coming from that area there. Okay, so the next thing, I think I might add some more blue into this image with the sh shadows, just to create a little bit more color contrast. Might just adjust this color somewhat. I think, no, I think it's, right. it's pretty good. One thing I like to do is drop this black slider, just add some nice contrast to the dark areas. And through the color grading, we've made this grass look green again which is actually a bit of a happy accident. I quite like that effect. I feel like the backlighting isn't bright enough yet, so I'm just going to create a linear gradient. It's not going to touch the subject. Let's brighten that like that. Add some more positive blacks and some negative dehaze. That's looking quite nice there. Let me just show you. Without the masks, that's what it looked like. And now with the masks, we've created a nice backlight there. I think what I want to do is I'm going to add a bit more clarity to the subject. So I'm going to go back to subject, add some clarity and maybe some texture. And what I can actually do is when we darken down the foreground, I'm going to just add some negative clarity there and negative textures to create more of an out of focus effect there. Okay, that's looking nice. I'll add some more dark contrast. And because this is going straight into the light, I might just roll off those blacks a bit. See there. And then maybe just drop the overall exposure. Now I'm just going to desaturate. I think this grass is actually looking a bit too strong. I'm just going to play around with the saturation and the vibrance. And then on the color grading, let's just turn that off. Yeah, it's the color grading that's causing that so I'm going to just roll that back up and then maybe just come to the saturation here and just drop that saturation a bit so well, not too much something like that let's just adjust this yellow to become more orange just to emphasize more of that light and I feel like it needs more contrast 
just to make those details pop nicely. Now the tail on this cheetah is getting a bit too strong, just going to use a quick paintbrush just to paint over that area, just to darken it down a bit, it's catching my attention. So I'm going to make sure auto mask is off. Just going to just darken down that small area there and not too much. Okay, now it's looking a little bit blue. So what I will do is just drop the saturation or maybe just warm up that small section there. I'm going to use a brush again. I'm going to warm that section up just so it looks a bit more uniform. All right, that's a bit better. Yeah, next thing, I'm just going to work on the details. Just a simple sharpening of about 70%. Masking all the background away. Radius at about 0 0.7. And the detail, don't need much detail there. I want to add some more magenta to this image. I feel like it's just a little bit too warm. Let's drop that like that. Add some more contrast. Going to just check the whites to make sure nothing's blown out. There are some very, very bright highlights on the chin here, which I'm not too worried about. So those are going to blow out. I just don't want to blow out any of that sky. So I'm just going to drop that back down. Let's just check a visual on this. That's looking quite nice. Maybe some global clarity. And let's actually add some negative dehaze just to emphasize that backlighting a bit more. Might add a bit more color grading there. Still, it's just looking a bit yellow. I'm just going to adjust this white balance a bit. I'm liking that. I think the last thing I'll do is add a vignette. Very, very subtle vignette there. So that is the raw file we started out with. This is the final result. And if you want to watch another full edit on a wildlife photograph, check out this video next, where I edit an elephant image in Lightroom.